This is the waterfall. Oh, I'm not going to wander off too far away, but to give you an idea what it looks like right here. And if I had to drink that water, I could because I have filters in the back of my pack that I could use. So this is the waterfall here in Penasquitos Canyon. Pretty cool, huh? To this waterfall right here, which is, according to this map here, it's 2.4 miles away. So we are going to go check it out and uh, see what it looks like here. So and head down this path. Now this is a, a well-used path area. You get a lot of uh, a lot of people that use it. You get a lot of mountain bikers that come through here. And then we'll go down and check this out. This is a ravine area right here. Check this ravine out. Now, right above here is Camino Ruiz Park. Right on top of the ravine here. And I've been there numerous times. Thing about San Diego it's got a lot of canyons in it and the, the thing about canyons and I've hiked a lot of them is you really got to stay on the main trail because if you start going into unmarked canyons that are not designated you can really run into some trouble uh, there's a lot of stuff that I've actually run into during some of my canyon hike days uh, over the years and those are usually the ones that are unmarked and you just kind of make your own track to go up these branches in the ravines and this is definite rattlesnake country so you really gotta watch your footing if you stay on the main path you'll be pretty much okay but when you start getting outside of it that's where you have problems there's another shot right here now whenever I hike out here no matter what hike I'm doing whether it's along the San Diego coastline here in the canyon, I got some good supplies on my back. One, I get water, plenty of water. I've got about a half a gallon of water with me, hydrated before I left. I got food to last me a couple days, energy food. And I could actually spend the night out here for several nights and survive. I've got a uh, IFAC kit, which is has a tourniquet, quick clot, anything that I need to use in the event that uh, you get injured out here because you're on your own and you want to be able to treat yourself. Sometimes the cell phone signal out here is not good. So we've hit our first checkpoint right here. This is, I'm walking to the waterfall and I just hit the sign right here, South Trail. Waterfall is 1.8 miles. So I'll be heading that way. And this is where I just came from. I actually launched this hike from Camino Ruiz, which is that way. So we're gonna head down this road toward the waterfall 
and I'm not sure what the status of this waterfall is. It's probably dried up or there's not a lot of water in it. But we're going to check it out. Easy walking today. Decide to start early because it really heats up. Now I'm actually getting ready to go on a long trip overseas into Southeast Asia. So I'm really getting myself in good hiking shape here, which I try to maintain. And I'm also trying out this uh, new Hero 10 that I have to uh, film uh, and journal my experiences here and my adventures. So I'm getting really familiarized with it, making sure I know how to use it correctly. And Now this is what San Diego used to look like. I mean, way, way back in the day, before everything became developed. And it's great they have a lot of these canyon areas that are preserved. So easy hiking today, and I'm looking forward to seeing that waterfall. So, I'm probably about three quarters of a mile away from this waterfall here in Penasquitos Canyon, which is uh, located in San Diego, California. And it's fairly easy walking. I'm practically on the road right here. Let's see the road, well used. You know, one of the main questions I get is what did I do to become a Navy SEAL going from the Marine Corps? Now, I'm going to turn back the clock here, okay? The 1984. So, what I'm saying here is if you have aspirations to be a Navy SEAL, and you are a Marine, like I was, and you want to go that path, it may be different now. So, But I'll explain what I did and what it took to get there, which is a, a path in itself, believe me. It wasn't easy. So first thing, about two years left in my enlistment in the Marine Corps, it's probably around 1983, I decided that I really wanted to be a SEAL. So what I did is uh, I called the recruiting office and I was stationed over there in Hawaii at the time. And uh, I called them up and I said, well, I want to be a Navy SEAL. But I'm a Marine, so what do I have to do? Well, pretty much they shut me down right off the bat. Meaning that, uh, why don't you just stay in the Marine Corps? Well, that's not what, you know, once you get this thing in your head, you want to do something, nothing stops you. So, I didn't let that stop me. So, what I did is uh, I got out. I totally discharged from the uh, Marine Corps. And when I got home, the next day I went down to the recruiting office and asked them, what do I need to do to become a Navy SEAL? Now remember, 1984, no internet, no media. And I remember the recruiter, the, this chief, he didn't have anything he didn't really know what to do at the time so he said come back in a day or two so I came back a few days later and then he found me what I needed to do to become an Navy SEAL 
which is one i had to select an a school which i did okay i was a took engine and i don't know why i did i just did two i had to go to boot camp again i asked him why i said i've only been out of the marine corps a couple weeks and says well you got to learn the navy ways and i said that's crazy i still have over four years in the marine corps still got to go to the boot camp i said all right no worries it's just one of those things you got to do it's a path that you have to cross to get through so i said no problem i'll go so i had to go through meps again take the ass grab again you know all that stuff in other words i was an other service veteran at the time so i remember once i got shipped off to boot camp i had to wait about a month or so after i totally enlisted to uh head down to great lakes and i remember when I got off the bus there in Great Lakes, you know, the first thing I'm asking, you know, most most kids there, you know, this is 1985, early 85. And, uh, you know, I just spent over four years in the Marine Corps. Look at this view right here. It's going to be almost to those falls. I said earlier, this is what San Diego really used to look like a long time ago. And you actually got houses on top of these ravines up here. So anyway, I remember, you know, get all these uh, commanders, company commanders, running around yelling and screaming. And I would ask them, I said, where do I take the UDT SEAL screening test? And these guys are looking at me like I'm you know, from Mars or something, just screaming and yelling. Well, I didn't get anything right off the, the bat when I got there, so I had to wait a few days, but I was persistent on finding out what I need to do to go take that screening test and start the process. I finally did about two days later while I was in receiving down there in Great Lakes. And uh, told me to head down to the, the swimming pool down there in Great Lakes. Now, when I showed up at the pool, along with about 150 other guys, now not everybody there was there for SEAL screening. You know, it's for second class diver, EOD, SEAL, you know. I think there's like 70 of us who were SEAL, and then the rest were for EOD and diving second class diver school well once we we had the first thing we had to do is put you know show us our apps at AFAB scores and uh that eliminated oh, about almost 50 percent of the guys because they didn't have the ASVAB score I think we started, what's the place, about 70 guys? So we're down to like, ah, you know, a little over 30, okay. It's long ago. Well, once we got done, we started the screening test. At the very end, only two of us made it. Me and this other guy uh, that I got to know well in my company. And, uh, we are the only ones that passed the screening test. So, couldn't wait to graduate boot camp, but you know what, there's one thing I had to do while I was there, so I could stay in shape, is uh, I became the chow runner. So you're this guy that, you know, you run the roster down to the galley, and then uh, before your actual company shows up to eat or if you're going to a class or something like that nobody really wanted that job because you, oh my gosh you got to run or so i did that in my boondockers you know back then you wore boondockers in those uh crazy blue shirts and dungarees i didn't care i knew i 
I had a goal in mind and that's all I could think about was being a SEAL. And that's the mindset you have to have to do this. Well, anyway, finished recruit training and then went off to A school. I remember while well, I was in A school down there in Great Lakes, it's eight weeks long. And I remember the class was so big. I'll leave this open area right here. Beautiful. So the class was so big that we had to split to day class and night class. And somehow I lucked out and got into the night class, which is good because then I didn't have to march down to class, which was, you know, basically just down the street. But, you know, schoolhouse, march. But what I did is I actually worked out during the day and I did the screening test every single day while I was there because they had a pool and I ran through the screening test each and every day while I was there. And while I was doing that, I was also doing some other things to stay in shape. Well, finally, fast forward, I finally graduated from boot camp and I was the first one to get my orders to after, in other words, they, I remember the, we had these two guys there and they told me, oh, Linky, you got your orders. You're going to uh, SEAL training. And they said, nobody makes it through that. I uh, said, well, I didn't say anything. And uh, I was so happy. I was ecstatic. And uh, I got my orders to Bud's. I was so happy. And this was uh, around... Uh, I think it was like around September of 85 or so, by the time I finished all that training. So I headed back home, did some leave at home, and then headed out to uh, Coronado, California, you know, to SEAL training. And this was the, around uh, end of September, early October, 1985. And I remember I was, I got to the uh, quarter deck there and uh, had my blues on. You know, I had a couple, I had some marine ribbons on there too. And it was funny. The uh, CDO looks at me and he goes, uh, oh, there it is right here. South Trail waterfall, a little over half a mile to go. And he goes, oh, I used to be a marine, huh? I go, uh, yes, sir. Well, Marines are pretty good at amphibious operations, aren't they? And I go, yes, they are. Well, why don't you go do an amphibious landing for me and then recheck in? And I go, what's that? You go down, hit the surf, roll around in the sand, then check in. And that was my welcome to Bud's. And I was, came back. I was wet and sandy. My blues were just trash. I, I think I ended up just tossing them. And uh, I started class 137 toward the end of October of 1985. And we started out with just a little over 122 guys in the class. And then six months later, May 2nd, 1986, is the day I graduated class 137 and it was one of the happiest days in my life so that's what I did become a marine to a navy seal and I thought I'd tell that story while I'm walking out here hiking and we're heading up this trail we should be up there that falls here soon well, I finally hit the sign here to the waterfall, so check it out. It's a waterfall here inside the Penasquitos Canyon. So we are pretty much here. You know, check it out. It's 
see if there's any water in it. It's a trail right here. And definite uh, deeper ravine there. So here we are. This is the actual waterfall that I was hiking to. Beautiful countryside out here. Here it is. This is the waterfall. Oh, I'm not going to wander off too far away, but to give you an idea what it looks like right here. And if I had to drink that water, I could because I have filters in the back of my pack that I could use. So this is the waterfall here in Penasquitos Canyon. Pretty cool, huh? You actually got a stairway to go down there. Check it out here. Kind of a modified stairway. So this is the falls. Obviously not as much water in it as normal, but uh, really cool to be here. So here I am at Penasquitos Canyon, and I just arrived here at the waterfall, and it's really cool. Got some other folks out here, so check it out. This is the waterfall area. These people just came in from another direction. This is a top view area. Now Penasquitos Canyon is located here in San Diego, California. And to get to this waterfall there's numerous other entry routes to get here. Really cool. And now I'll start my track back. It's a whole day, probably about six miles of tracking. See ya. So just some other footage from around the waterfall and a really good view of the canyon right here so check it out this is right above the waterfall area which r runs right down this ravine area this is just some of the outskirts here and now I'm gonna head back to uh, Camino Ruiz entrance. You know the cool thing about this, if you have a mountain bike out here, they got some quick tools out here. You got a pump, some tools, so take care of you. And now back to Camino Ruiz entrance, which is probably about three miles away because it took me about three, under three, to get here. So, be a good day of hike. Probably about six miles over six. Time to get done with it. And there's a lot of other folks out here today, too. It's hard. And I do a lot of these adventures, so, you know, one, I'm building my YouTube channel, so consider subscribing. I've got a lot of adventures coming up. In fact, I've got a really good one coming up here in the next couple weeks overseas. And I've got some exciting adventures planned for over there. And I really appreciate anybody that does follow me on Instagram, Traveling Frogman, and YouTube. So I'll see you in my next video. 
coming up hopefully soon. So check it out one last time. This is Penasquitos Canyon. Thanks for watching. See ya.